this video we're going to look at uh, steel fabrication uh, so steel fabrication is making up the steel parts um, this is usually done in a factory rather than out on site uh, because the factory is enclosed and you've got all the equipment close by and it just makes it easier to handle stuff trying to do welding out in the elements when it's raining or windy is really really hard trying to do it accurately is even worse same with the cutting and uh, drilling the holes and things like that so usually done in the factory and then you um, truck it out to site and lift it into place which is one of the advantages also it means that the site's not cluttered up with all the the, the bits needed to um, to make up the steel structure components that are delivered complete to site uh, it's also clean as well clean dry no wind um, you've got the equipment there so the processes we're going to look at here are cutting forming drilling and uh, joining so cutting involves cutting the steel to play to, to shape um, and uh, length uh, so there's different ways of doing it uh, cold sawing uh, or mechanical cold sawing, shearing or abrasive water jet so cold sawing is basically you just get a hacksaw there and, and cut away so there's a mechanical hacksaw sort of shown there shearing is like a pair of scissors or, and, and that's good for um, cutting uh, sheet metal for thin sections of metal but for bigger sections of metal you can't really shear it you have to sort of saw through it uh, another way of doing it is chemical which is an oxy-settling torch uh, which is simple, um, quick, but the heat affects the steel. So where it basically it heats up and melts the steel uh, as it cuts. The way it cuts is not by grinding out the steel like a cold saw, but by melting a, a little part of the steel and that drops out. The steel adjacent to the steel that's just been cut is heated, which means that it's heat annealed. So it's going to have different properties. It's going to be a little bit more brittle than the, the rest of the steel so that needs to be considered and then there's uh, thermal we've got plasma once again it melts a um, a, uh, a section of the steel to make the cut um, up to 20 mil plate it's less accurate and the heat affects the steel laser cutting uh, uses a laser to cut the steel once again the heat affects the steel but the thing about laser cutting is it can cut very very accurately so down to millimeters or even parts of a millimeter but once again it does um, the heat does affect the steel um, the other one that I sort of haven't really talked about is abrasion water jet so this is a high pressure jet of water which uh, once again sort of um, cuts the steel with, with water power uh, and the advantage of that is that it there's no eff heat affected zone it doesn't really heat the steel up um, around the cut area like the um, chemical and thermal ones do so if it's essential that the um, the, the edge of the steel um, keeps its um, properties then um, then uh, water jets or cold sawing might be the way to go so gas welding so how do we join it um, one way is gas welding and what you're doing there is you are melting a bit of steel you're putting the two bits of steel together and you're melting another piece of steel to them uh, it's hot metal, there's burns, uh, electric shock, bright welding. Um, this is uh, actually this is oxy acetylene welding, so you've just got the, uh, the hazards there of burning. Obviously, there's no electric shock because there's no electrical systems. So, um, one's, one of those tanks is oxygen, one of them is acetylene, and basically, it does the same as the cutting, but in this case, it's melting uh, to produce a, a join. Um, CNC, Computer nu Numeric Control. So this allows the computer to shape the, the, the steel. So rather than a person um, guiding the laser or the, um, the cutting implement, uh, it is a computer. So you draw the drawing to a high accuracy um, on a CAD machine, and then you feed it into the computer, and the computer controls the, the arm, which shapes it. So that allows you to cut out really complex shapes very easily, and also to do it very accurately. Uh, can use oxyacetylene, plasma, laser, or high pressure water as the cutting implement. Um, they are becoming more and more popular and they're becoming more and more affordable as well. So it is quite an affordable way of getting uh, um, uh, quite interesting shapes cut. Um, so it, it's quite a, uh, an emerging technology. Okay, so joining the steel. So you can join the main um, 
the main methods of joining it are welding and bolting. So welding involves you melting a uh, part of the steel, uh, putting the two bits of steel together and then melting a third piece. Uh, the third piece when you're melting it, it'll melt parts of the two bits to be joined and so at the end of it you will have one complete bit of steel. If you cut that through, cross section, you won't see a join between this and this. They'll all have melted and combined them to be essentially look like one shape. Um, the base metal and filler is melted and joined. Uh, it cannot be reversed. You can grind it out, but uh, they're, they're still um, those edges are still affected, um, and it takes some skill and bulky equipment to do. Bolting, um, it's holding it with nuts and bolts. So basically, you've got a bit of steel there. You've drilled some holes in it. You've got a plate here welded onto the column, and to erect it, they put the column up, which had the plates um, welded to it already, and then they just crane this into place. So they drop it into place and someone puts a bolt through and bolts it together. So very easy joint to make on site. Doesn't require as much skill as a welding machine and it's much easier to do at height than um, trying to do site welds. So welding, there's different types of welding. There's MIG welding which is easy to master, most common and can weld most common materials. Um, and so basically the MIG welder um, just uh, has a, uh, an arc between the, um, the the element which contains the, the filler material and the uh, device being welded. So that's what happens with that and arc welding as well. And so what it does is it melts um, the filler and creates, when the filler sets, it creates a joint between the, the two bits of metal. Arc welding is a little bit harder to master, uh, more basic equipment and is better with heavy steel sections. So once again, there's, uh, it's similar to MIG welding, uh, just a little bit more complicated. It's got a filler which is melted to form the joint. Gas welding, you use an oxyacetylene torch to melt a piece of steel, um, which once again acts as the filler to uh, make the joint. It's harder to master, it's less common now because MIG welding and arc welding are so common and so affordable and are actually faster. So here's someone doing arc welding. So notice that when the arc welding is being done, there's a really bright light and the guy has to wear a very, um, uh, have eye protection. So it, like sunglasses if you like, but very, very, um, very, very thick. So when the arc weld is not happening, you can't actually see through these things. You just, it's very hard to see. So that light is very bright and it requires quite significant protection to make sure that it, you protect yourself, um, your eyes can actually burn a hole in your retina. So here's a pic another picture of a person sort of welding it all together. Um, you can see that the, there's the, the welder box there. Um, you can't see it but there will be one of the electrodes connected up to the item being welded and the other part of the electrode is connected up to the, the welding um, piece. And so what happens is that there's an electric current flows from here down into the piece and that electric current creates heat which um, causes the metal to melt and create the weld. That's basically how it works. Um, so that one there is a MIG welder. So it basically feeds the um, feeds the filler material uh, as you push the button. This one here is actually TIG welding. Uh, sorry, this is a uh, yeah, TIG welding. So you can see that he's got the filler material there and he's melting it with that one there. So there's the MIG welding there, there's the MIG welding set up, as I said, they've got an earth clamp, they've got the gloves, they've got the thing, and it creates a circuit, uh, it's the electrical potential that creates the, the, the spark and causes the metal to be melted. So the different types of weld types, you've got a fillet weld, so you've got a piece down like that, a piece like that, and basically you just put a filler material in between them. Uh, you can have a fillet weld on one side or a fillet weld on the other side. So that's what it looks like, the symbol. So the symbol is that little triangle there. Uh, fill it well on either side is that side. And it's an 8mm thick, so that's what that 8 means. Uh, or you can have a butt weld. In other words, you cut a um, you cut a V into it and you weld the ends together um, using the same devices. And that is shown as a V or an upside down V. Uh, so there's a picture of a fillet weld there, and that's a really nice looking one. You can see there's a consistent pattern to it, um, and it's um, 
extends along the whole length of it. Um, so that's a good weld and it's probably got good penetration. So when they're talking about penetration, some of the metal and the bits being welded together will be melted and they will become part of that weld. And so you're looking for penetration into the pieces being welded as well as the, um, the, the weld itself. And here's a butt weld there. So you can see that um, they've actually cut, you know, the butt weld, is, it's, a, it's a partial butt weld, so they only put a V in there and they, they welded um, that part of it. But you can see they've cut it off and you can't actually see a gap. So once upon a time, that was, there was, a, that was the edge of the metal, but it's actually been melted to provide um, a continuous connection. So to all intents and purposes, this is one piece of steel. So the weld's a bit crooked, but it's got a, a constant shape to it. Um, so that's that's a reasonable looking weld. So bolting, uh, bolting on site, um, it's usually done on site, and it's really easy because it's much quicker to do than to stand up at height and try to do welding. You can imagine with all the welding equipment, it is really quite hard to try to make those sort of connections. Uh, so a bolt is basically a bolt and a nut, um, sometimes with a washer on. Uh, and so basically you put the bolt through, um, tighten up the nut and you've got a connection. So you've got two bits of metal there, put one there, one there, and then bolt it through and you've got a connection. So that 